Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another episode of Model Railway Basics. Today I'll be showing you the very simple technique I use for putting down static grass, and hopefully by the end of the video you'll see just how much it can transform a layout. Now, static grass has become increasingly popular in recent years, and it's easy to understand why, given that it can produce some really impressive results. But what actually is it? Well, you'll see all this in the video, but essentially you have lots of tiny grass-coloured fibres, usually only a few millimetres long, and you can drop these over a section of your layout that you've covered in glue. The really clever part, though, is that you can charge these fibres with static electricity, and so when they fall into the glue, they all stand up on end, creating the illusion of individual blades of grass. Now, that's the very basic technique, but where this gets really interesting is that you can build up different layers of static grass by using different lengths and even different colours too. Of course, this is where it can get a bit confusing for some people and a bit overwhelming too, because you now have so many different options, it's difficult to know where to start. Luckily though, I've got a really simple technique that I've been using on my own layout for a while now, and so that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's have a look, shall we? So here's the demonstration board so far, and you may remember in a previous episode I showed you how to make the hills and embankments using polystyrene and plaster bandage. Before I lay the static grass though, I'm going to cover all of this with a coat of brown paint. And that's so later when I add the static grass, if there's any gaps or thin areas, we won't see the white shining through. The brown colour just makes it look like a layer of dirt instead. Now you can use any paint for this, cheap acrylic, poster paints and even emulsion tester pots. I actually didn't have any brown paint when filming this so I just mixed a few random colours together and as always seems to be the way I ended up with this sort of mud colour. One thing I do like to do once I've got the first coat on is to water the paint down slightly and then go back over the entire board just to get into all the nooks and crannies that I may have missed the first time round. It's at this point that I like to ballast my track, so if you missed the previous episode where I showed you how to do that, check out the link at the top right of the video now to see that tutorial. Now this is an optional step, but I want to have a bit of variation on this section. I don't want it to be completely grassed over, and especially near the track bed I want the grass to thin out realistically. To do this I add a layer of dirt along either side of the ballast. So as you can see I put down some PVA glue and now I'll spread this all along the edge. And then I'll take some dirt and just scatter this over the glue. Now believe it or not, this is just dirt I got from the garden. If it's dry, then all you'll need to do is sieve it out so that you only get the finer particles. Most likely though, it'll be a bit wet, in which case you can dry it out by leaving it on top of a radiator or even putting it in the oven for a bit. Now, some people do like to cover their entire baseboard in a layer of dirt before putting down static grass. Personally, I've never bothered as it takes up a lot of time for something you're not really going to see, but I do think it's worth it for the edges or the paths where the grass comes to an end. I've also decided I want a small dirt pathway on this board too, so I'm going to do exactly the same up here as well.
and then when the glue is dry you can just remove the excess. For me this is quite simple because I'm working on a small board so I can just tip it all off. If you're working on something larger though you may want to use a small vacuum instead. And finally, now it's time to start work on the static grass itself. So to get the best results with static grass, you need to use a static grass applicator, which is one of these. There are loads of different kinds available to buy from lots of different manufacturers, and they can get quite expensive, but mine cost me about £20, and I'll put a link in the description to where I got it from. Now you put the static grass in the container here and the applicator basically works by creating a static charge so that when you shake it over your layout to add the grass, all the fibres stand up on end. The static grass I'm using is from the WWS range, which I believe is also rebranded as Pico Static Grass too. I've got a selection of different lengths here ranging from 2mm right through to 6mm and also a few different colours as well which will give us some variation. I like to start off with the shortest layer first, so here you can see I'm adding the 2mm summer grass to the container. Next I'll spread PVA glue all over the board where I want the grass to stick. As you can see I want most of this to be covered in grass, so I'm putting it pretty much everywhere apart from on the track and the verges that I created earlier. Now some people like to use special base glues for this that apparently work better. That's great if you want to go for that, but I'm just using standard PVA here as it's always worked fine for me. Like ballasting, I'd also recommend that you stick to a small area at a time. Anything bigger than the area I'm working on now and it can get a bit overwhelming. You also run the risk of the glue starting to dry before you put the grass down, so I'd say just do a little bit at a time. With the glue down, it's now time to add the first layer of static grass. To help create the static charge, this red wire that comes off the applicator has to be touching the surface of the layout. It actually has a clip on it too, so you could attach it to the rails if you like. Then with the current on, I start sprinkling the grass all over the baseboard. The fibres are automatically attracted to the wire mesh on the applicator, which causes them to stand upright in the glue as it dries. This creates the appearance of individual blades of grass, which will become more apparent as we start putting down the longer static grass later on. And there we go, that's the entire area covered. Obviously though it's looking a bit too neat and colourful at the moment, but don't worry, this is just the base layer. Now, I like to let this completely dry first before moving on, and this has the advantage of meaning that I can reclaim a lot of the grass fibres that didn't stick. As I tip the board up you'll see a lot of excess falls off, and this can easily be collected up for use in the future. Again, if you can't tip your layout up, well you can achieve the same results with a small hand vacuum, as long as you remember to empty it first. One extra thing I like to do is to add some grass tufts along the side of the track. This can be done easily by putting some random patches of glue on the dirt verge next to the track and then sprinkling the static grass over this. And when everything is dry and the excess has been brushed away, you can see it's a nice little feature that just blends everything together. For the second layer of grass, I'm going to use the 4mm spring colour. Now to get this to stick to the base layer, I'll use the Pico layering spray. This can simply be sprayed all over the grass and you can kind of see where it's landing because the existing layer is starting to go a little bit white.
And then once again, I use the applicator to add my next layer. In this case, I still want the 4mm grass to cover most of the board, so once again, I'm going for fairly even coverage. As you can see, this is now bringing the landscape to life, and it looks a bit more realistic and less perfect than it did before. I still want to add a few more layers though to create some variation, so once again I'll use the Pico layering spray, but this time I'm only going to spray it in a few select areas. And then this time I'll use the applicator to add longer 6mm autumn grass to these areas, which will hopefully create some nice variations in the colour. And you can see a bit better now how the grass fibres really stand up on end thanks to that static charge. Now, we often build our layouts to depict summertime, which if we look in the real world means we would probably get areas of dead grass too. So if you do want to go for a bit more of a realistic look and to add even further variation to the colour, you can do the same again but this time with 6mm dead grass. Again, using the layering spray just highlight a few small areas here and there and then you can use the applicator to create patches of dead grass. And that's my technique for adding static grass to a layout. It's quite simple, but it served me well when I was getting started. The general rule is to remember to start with the shorter fibres first and then build it up with longer layers to get more variation. Remember, you don't have to stick to the colours I used either, but I would recommend having a few different ones to play with so that your grass doesn't look too uniform. I think we can all agree though that this really transforms the look of the layout. Suddenly it's gone from looking quite bare to looking much more like a finished scene. So if you've enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications for future video tutorials. Thank you so much for watching everyone, I've had an absolute blast making this series for you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!